There's a lot of craziness going on in the college football landscape, especially in the SEC right now. But the one program that you can say is a really healthy program right now is Arkansas. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. We're also going to dive into some of the comments made by Hugh Freeze and getting you ready for the Liberty game coming up this weekend, as well as me triggering an entire fan base over one simple tweet. It's all coming up here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, where they help you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as we are at the midway point of the week. And I know that people are excited about having a home game this weekend, which will be the first of a three game home stretch. So have some really good games and this game against the top 25 team and the next game will be a top 25 team. and The next game will be a top 25 team. So it's uh, it's going to get uh, pretty real here over the next few weeks and we'll see uh, how the rankings play out. But uh, you know, things have been pretty quiet on Arkansas's front. You know, no, no real significant news. We talked about a couple of injury updates uh, that were going on for Arkansas, and obviously uh, those, those were uh, unfortunate. But uh, it's kind of just business as usual for Arkansas. Getting ready for this game, we'll have some comments from Hugh Freeze, the coach of Liberty, uh, here in, in just a little bit and talk about some of uh, the comments he made. But, you know, I started thinking about – the craziness going on, uh, specifically in SEC football, which is every year, really. But we mentioned the Auburn situation and how they just found themselves in such a crazy ordeal. You have an AD that gets hired or the AD that got hired wasn't like the president didn't talk to the other coaches before they hired him. A lot of miscommunication. They tried to hire Hunter Yurchek. He, sold, he told him no. I'm sure they tried to hire other ADs that told him no. Like it was just a crazy chaotic thing. And then you hear the stories coming out from Brian Harson about how like uh, he'd always get in arguments with his assistant coaches, you know, Derek Mason being one of those, which uh, cracked me up because and I have to read this because it's really funny. Uh, but it was uh, apparently, according to John Talty, uh, who was of uh, AL.com, he says during a disagreement, Derek Mason, who was a defense coordinator, told Brian Harson, I've been a head coach in this league longer than you have. And Harson replied, oh, you mean at Vanderbilt? Like, that's just something that makes me think of, like, just, you know, dudes at a bar. Be like, no, he's a good coach, man. He, he, was, he was an SEC coach. Yeah, at Vanderbilt. Like, it, it almost uh, just sounds like some guys at a bar. But anyway, just chaos is going on at Auburn. And then a program like Florida, which I know that we don't talk about a lot because Arkansas doesn't play them until next year. But uh, they've had some issues. They've had players transferring out. They've had uh, one of their best defensive players kicked off the team. Uh, there seems to be. A lot of rumors speculating about the the uncertainty and, and craziness going on down there. Uh, uh, South Carolina's had their own frustrations where, you know, some players are unhappy with the way things have been going and them losing to Missouri in the way they did. A&M, you know, don't, don't even get a start on that and all the insanity that's going on down there with uh, with players being upset and coaches not being very good and, and all of that. So the point is, is that there's just a lot of things going on in the SEC at other programs, and in some cases, Big programs, programs that uh, have a lot of expectations and have done a really good job in recruiting and everything like that, that are going through some turmoil right now. But looking at it from the Arkansas perspective, this season hasn't been perfect. I wouldn't even classify this season for the Razorbacks as great. In fact, I guess if you were going to put it in some way, it'd be, I mean, how would you classify it? I guess I, I would classify it as good. You know, it's not average because you're above average. I think people feel very confident about the way you can finish the season. And you're not bad by any stretch, but you're just, you're good. We'll see it now. You have a chance to be, I think you can be great if you went out the rest of the way, which I know is easier said than done. But right now you're good. But it came with some ups and downs. It came with some obstacles. Arkansas lost three straight. Uh, you had some injuries. You had some frustrations. You had some, you know, some players that, uh, you know, in the quarterback situation, that, that seemed like it was a tough one to figure out and some uncertainty there. It, it hasn't come easy. It hasn't come without problems. But the one thing that I have been and continue to be so impressed about with Arkansas 
is that they have a lot of talent on this team. They have a lot of got new guys, transfers that have come in, high quality ones too. They've had some injuries that have been very impactful, especially in the secondary, as we all know. You know, Arkansas just had some some issues that has when in a we stay in a way of what you would compare them to other programs could have caused a lot of turmoil. You know, the, the situation with Lee Hornsby that could have caused a whole rift in the team. Uh, you think about the amount of injuries that amounted up in the secondary that could have caused finger pointing and problems and coaches getting frustrated and lashing out, if you will. Um, it could have caused with the way that they were looking recruiting issues and suddenly people not being on board with it. You could have caused players to go on social media on their Instagram post and put out these cryptic posts that we see so often from athletes in college and in pros kind of alluding to the fact that not everything is all sunshine and rainbows within the program. Like all of these things could have potentially happened given the way things went for Arkansas for a little bit and comparing and how it's gone for other programs too in the SEC, but it didn't. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that Arkansas is perfect, that everything with Arkansas is perfect, that they have no problems whatsoever. Like, cause that's just not true. Like they still have a lot of work to do and we'll see how the season ends. But my point is, is it just continues to show you how healthy of a program that Sam Pittman has at Arkansas to where even when they lose games, when they lose games, they feel like they should win when they're having struggles, when injuries are coming in, uh, when coaches are getting criticized and, and, you know, fans are going at them, like all those things you haven't seen, at least publicly any wavering you haven't seen anyone lashing out you haven't seen anybody you know causing a storyline for people to start writing like, well what does this mean is, is this person going to be transferring out i mean is there is there trouble is there trouble going on within the locker room you haven't seen any of that and i think that is such a credit to sam Pittman and, and the culture that's there because it's so easy these days so easy to have players who feel like they deserve more, feel like they have been told something that maybe they're not getting, have been promised something that they're not getting, uh, and sometimes ex act extremely selfish. And, and I'm not saying every player is this way, but there are those out there that do. And I just look at that, and I see none of that with Arkansas. Now, there's a lot of high-talented guys in there. I mean, you got a couple of five stars on the team. You got a bunch of four stars. You got a bunch of guys that, uh, have found the field and had production a little bit more, you know, with the running back room. You know, you haven't heard anybody complain about Rocket getting too many carries, you know, wide receivers. You haven't heard about anybody saying, oh, I'm upset because this guy is getting more touches than me. Um, you know, just go down the list. You haven't heard of anything like that. And that just makes me continue to believe that as long as Sam Pittman is the head coach of Arkansas, because of the culture he's built, because of the accountability that he has, for his players and also the communication that he has with his team and with his staff and everybody involved, that there's complete and total transparency about everything to where if a player is ever upset or not happy with the results of the production or anything that they're actually getting, it can be handled internally and it can be talked about internally to where that player doesn't feel the need to lash out on social media to get his point across. That's how I read it. Now, maybe I'm looking too much into this. Maybe maybe there are some things that may be happening that I just don't know about because I'm not there in the locker room. Maybe so. But when I look at the Razorback football program, you'd be hard-pressed to find a program in this conference especially that's had the struggles that they've had this year but has be, been able to maintain and stay the course, to pick each other, to pick the team back up, and to be a team right now that seems poised to have a strong finish to the season. You'd be hard-pressed to find another team like that. And Arkansas has, I mean, with Florida and Billy Napier, it's his first year, and he got major issues. And m and Jimbo, he's recruited five stars like they're going out of style and can't do anything with them. And, and people are upset. There's suspensions going on there. You know, it, and it's not just here in the SEC, but look at, you know, what Michigan State and all the stuff that they have going on, the problems that they have, you know, it's working pretty nasty up there. 
you know, Oklahoma with all the issues that they have. Like, is Arkansas the best team in the SEC? No. Are they even top five? No, I, I wouldn't make that argument. But they're healthy. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about program and culture. It's healthy. And as long as that is healthy, you'll be able to continue to build it into a foundational program that is, if you can just get the players in and get the coaches in, get the, get the pieces to put together. If you do that, it's built on such a solid foundation that at the floor, at the minimum, this team will at least have a winning record every year. At the minimum. But with the right pieces in the place and the right timing, because that's also a big thing too, throwing a little luck to go along with it as well, there's no reason why Sam Pittman in Arkansas can't be a program that year after year after year continues to be highly competitive in this conference. That's why I feel like it's going to be such a strong finish. I'm not saying that Arkansas has been perfect. Again, I want to reiterate that. I've said it many times. I want to reiterate that because I know people are going to get at me after me in the comments. But what I do respect and appreciate is the fact that at Arkansas, right now, after things have been tough, is when you're poised to play your best football. Where if other programs had the same exact situation happen with Arkansas, where they started 3-0, and they lost three in a row, they had a bunch of injuries and all that, those programs would crumble. Those programs would have people leaving the program right and left. That's the difference. That's why I believe and continue to believe Sam Pittman is the right man for the job. In a day and age where everybody wants to lash out and point fingers and cause problems, the Arkansas Razorbacks, they ain't doing that. And that's because of Sam Pittman and the culture he has built at Arkansas. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Arkansas and Liberty and get to hear from Hugh Freeze here in just a second. But folks, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. All you do is you go to LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Then you add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small business rates LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So LinkedIn jobs wants to help you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, uh, you know, Arkansas and Liberty are playing each other this weekend, and Liberty is a top 25 team. And uh, it's not surprising. They've had a pretty good year. They only had one loss this year, which was a one-point loss to Wake Forest. So they've uh, they've been getting it done and getting after it. And uh, Hugh Freeze is their coach, which we all remember Hugh Freeze from his days. Uh, not only at Ole Miss, but he was also at Arkansas State and everything. But I thought it was really funny, you know, kind of a cool clip and funny clip from Hugh Freeze this week when he was meeting with the media talking about their preparations for their game against the Razorbacks in Fayetteville. Uh, I have a good feel what I think the Arkansas will be like also, and, um, you know, we'll have to handle it. And, you know, I showed them how you do Woo Pig Suey and Arkansas Razorback. You know, you got you to gotta get into it. I mean, you're going to hear it a lot, so you've got to – you got to get into it and uh, and know what you're talking about. So I want to be familiar with the whole whole deal and enjoy the atmosphere. And I was Hugh Freeze talking about it and talking about the like the little you know woo pig suey that he says you you're going to hear it. And um, but here's the thing, like with Hugh Freeze, I actually don't mind Hugh Freeze. I know that people of, of his situation at Ole Miss and how that came crashing down quickly because he was buying recruits. And he was doing it with the subtlety of a baboon because when you go six and six and then Ole Miss suddenly brings in like the number one recruiting class where they get the number one player out of Illinois, the number one player out of Texas, the number one player out of Florida, the number one player out of like Georgia, all in the same class. Everyone's like, okay, yeah, there might be something going on here. And then, you know, they had some good success. 
it just sucks that they were just a four than 25 play away in overtime from winning the SEC West. Sucks to see that. But still, they were always a very good team. Arkansas actually owned Hugh Freeze. And Fayetteville has not been kind to Hugh Freeze. In fact, the only time in the state of Arkansas that Hugh Freeze has won uh, was, of course, when he was with Ole Miss, I'm saying, uh, was when they came to Little Rock in 2013 and lost, the, and uh, Ole Miss won that time. But the other two times in Fayetteville, Ole Miss lost. In 2014, they got spanked by a final score of uh, 30 to nothing. That game was in the rain. And then the next one was Arkansas winning in incredible fashion in 2016, beating Chad Kelly where uh, Jared Cornelius hits the go-ahead touchdown, then Santos Ramirez hits Chad Kelly, and the ball gets fumbled and, and all of that. So, uh, yeah, so it's been a lot of uh, a lot of fun times, fun success to go along with it. And, you know, he also talked about the weather being terrible every time he's gone to Fayetteville, which I started looking at the weather itself because I was curious about it. And I was like, well, will this be a bad weather game? And I'm looking at it, I was like, no, it's going to be a little chilly, though. It's going to be 59 degrees a high in Fayetteville, but it's going to be sunny uh for uh for the majority of the day today or this weekend so uh there's also that but still at the at the same time i just i look at this game and i feel like arkansas is the better team like arkansas is the better team they're more talented you gotta take them seriously though i mean they are liberty and they do have a good coach and they have had some some success this year but i just feel like talent wise it's going to be the same thing with arkansas that it was against auburn and that it was against byu you run run the ball effectively don't turn it over, and you win the game. I know that sounds easier said than done, but that's the recipe for Arkansas success. I mean, against BYU, Arkansas's offense just did whatever they wanted, and they even had turnovers they were over, over, able to overcome. And then against um, Auburn, Auburn didn't turn the ball over once, but Arkansas was able to run the ball extremely effectively. If you run the ball effectively and you don't turn the ball over, you're going to win this game. I think it's pretty much the recipe the rest of the way. So I think Arkansas overall is the better team. I like what they've, uh, what, what you know, obviously the way that they're playing right now, the defense is getting healthier. And I think there's been some adjustments made on defense to, especially in the secondary, to be able to uh, put guys in good position or at least better position. So it could be a high scoring game. You know, I, I think Liberty could absolutely score, uh, you know, 28 points in this game. But here's my thing. Here's my thing. I still believe Missouri State was a better team than Liberty. Now, maybe I'm going to eat my words. Maybe, maybe I'm going to be problem, but I think that Missouri State, offensively especially, was a better team, better coached. And that's nothing against Hugh Freeze. It's more the, the, just a compliment to Bobby Petrino. And you still won that game. You need to come from behind, but you still won that game. Arkansas is not going to get caught sleeping in this one. They're not going to be overlooking anybody in this one. The best thing that, I, any, that could have happened to Arkansas in this game is having Liberty in the top 25 because that shows, hey, this, this ain't no slouch. They're in the top 25. That Just don't read the name, see the number. They're a good team. And so I think on top of that, I, Arkansas is a better team, and I think it's going to be a beautiful weekend in Fayetteville. And uh, I guess we'll have more of the preview as the uh, week goes on here as we'll, we'll uh, dive into that as well. But, uh, folks, you also got to tell you about BetOnline.net being your number one source for all betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains to be con your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Just head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online, where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. This is something that happened on social media, which I always enjoy seeing and just people burning down. It's incredible. It is absolutely incredible that uh, I saw a tweet from Eric Ainge, a former Tennessee quarterback. I don't have a problem with that, Eric Ainge, uh, but he tweeted out and said, Playing between the hedges is overrated. Talking about Georgia. Not that loud and definitely not intimidating. It's nothing like playing in Neyland. The balls will be just fine in Athens. And I saw that and I'm like, okay. 
I went to Georgia last year. I went to Athens last year in that game. That was an 11 a.m. game after college game day was there, and Arkansas was number eight, and they got smoked by Georgia. I've never been to an, a louder football stadium than what Georgia had last year, and I've been to a few. I'll admit I haven't been to Neyland, but I've been to a few, and it was the loudest I've ever been. So I think it's dumb for Eric Ainge to say not that loud. Okay, if you want to say Tennessee is louder, that's an opinion. But to say not that loud is really dumb. That's a dumb tweet. So anyways, I quote tweeted and says, I've never been to a stadium louder than uh, Neyland, or San Sanford Stadium at Georgia last season. And it was 11 a.m. Well, then the out of the woodwork, the Tennessee fans come flying in and losing their minds. I didn't even say that Tennessee wasn't the loudest. I'm just saying I have never been to a college football stadium louder than Sanford Stadium in Georgia. And you would have thought that I told them, I said that Tennessee was the most irrelevant football program to ever exist because they went crazy. And they're still going crazy. They are losing their minds in my mentions. And it's incredible to see such a sensitive and soft fan base over something so stupid lose their minds in a collective base. So just to read some of these tweets, uh, you need to get out more. Tennessee's decibel record's 124.4. That happened this year. Georgia's 112. Tennessee gets 112 against Akron. I was like, oh, yeah, those little uh, – decibel meters on the jumbotron telling everybody to get loud yeah that's 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 not made up at all that's completely and totally accurate because in that case shoot arkansas has gotten 120 almost every game and then i had a bunch of tennessee fans saying you clearly wasn't at the alabama tennessee game great grammar like there was more than one person that said you clearly wasn't and it was two different people and i'm like y'all killing me and then uh they had these uh, weird flexes of saying we've sold out like four times this season already i'm like wow Incredible. Hang the banner. You've sold out your stadium four times. They don't know how to do anything in postseason play in any of the major sports, but dad gummit, they know how to sell out four out of the five games at home. Yay. I am. I just, I crack up. I think it, I think it's hilarious. I think it's absolutely hilarious that oh, something so dumb, uh, like a, an absolute no mention of Tennessee and saying that Tennessee Stadium sucks or that it's not loud or anything triggered an entire fan base. And I have to deal with a lot of fan bases on my social media. I've dealt with Auburn basketball fans, Kentucky basketball fans. I've dealt with AM football fans. Uh, I've dealt with LSU pretty much in all sports, Ole Miss, all of them. I've dealt with them all. But Tennessee, without a doubt, is the softest and most sensitive fan base I've ever seen in my life. And it continues to be that way. It was like that in football. It was like that in baseball. Oh, my goodness. Like, honestly, I didn't care if Tennessee baseball last year went to the World Series or not. But the only reason I rooted against them is because their fans are stupid. Like, they are stupid fans that do not really understand the way things work and how what it's like really to be an effective uh program in baseball because they had one year of the college world series they were number one the whole season when they lost to notre dame in the super regionals i'm like yeah this is how it works idiots just because you're the number one team in baseball does not mean you're going to win it all but you thought that you were arrogant enough to say all of that and you don't know your history about how it works in the postseason so it just cracks me up I i'm laughing i'm still getting mentions of it and so bring it on tennessee fans sorry i made you guys feel so uh so hurt and whiny and crying about something that had nothing even to do with you. I was just saying it's the loudest one I've ever been in. Man, and that's just come from a Razorback fan. I feel like we have a sensitive fan base, but man, y'all are y'all are making us look like we're we're strong, confident people. Honestly, what I compare it to is with Tennessee fans is what it gives me the vibes of. It's almost like you give that, it's like <laughs> it's it's like uh it's like you give someone it's like these superpowers and you're like, okay, here's your superpowers, but you know, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with this. So just be careful. Don't take advantage of it and be careful. And then the second that someone in the city asks them, or when they see them have superpowers, say, how can I, why do you have superpowers? They just burn the whole city down because how dare you even question them at all? It's like, you got something good going for you. And then someone says something that the smallest extent that maybe or maybe not you could take as an insult and you burn the entire city because heaven forbid anybody saying anything negative 
or even critical about you, y'all y'all need some help. Y'all need, y'all need to chill, especially for a program that has been as about as irrelevant in postseason play in all major sports over the past decade. Y'all need to chill. That's just my two cents. I'm sure I will have to deal with them the rest of the day, but part of the job, I guess. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.